Hey everybody, I have gotten seeds from Baker Creek over the last couple of months. You saw when I had the whole seed catalog video, I mentioned some of the stuff I'd already gotten. And since that time, I've seen Facebook posts by Baker Creek and it's inspired me to get more seeds. So <laughs> I've gotten a lot of stuff. I already have enough seeds that there's really no reason for me to keep buying them, but it's always fun. And I think that the channel will enjoy me growing some of these kind of new and weird and crazy things. So I've gotten them. We'll see how it goes. Some of them are kind of normal. Some of them are kind of unique. Either way, I think they'll be fun this year. So this will give you a sense of some of what we might be growing this year. It certainly won't be exhaustive. And if you've checked out the free seed giveaway, we'll also be growing the four varieties that are in that free seed giveaway, which is two types of tomatoes, a jalapeno pepper, and a bell pepper. So good basics for everyone. Check it out if you haven't already. And if it's before March 17th when you're watching this video, then please enter if you're a United States subscriber. So what I am growing, you can see right here on the top, we have the Musk de Provence. Now this is basically a pumpkin, but it's a little bit more interesting looking. It has a, a slightly more flat than rounded look to it, but it has very good flavor. It's great for, for throwing in the oven and baking and is a, a good winter squash for eating. The other thing that's really impre impressive about this variety, I've actually grown it before and the pumpkin lasted for more than a year in my basement and still would have been edible. Although I did keep it just kind of to test how long it was about a year and a half. It started showing signs of, of, deterioration or rot and so at that point I, I still kind of kept it and it basically became petrified and I tried testing the seeds and maybe I'll post that video sometime because I recorded it thinking I might do a video on it but since it was unsuccessful I didn't put it up but I was just testing if you let seeds essentially rot inside of a pumpkin are they still going to be viable and the answer predictably was no so um, but there you go. I've spoiled the video for you if I ever do post it, but I'm sure I have the raw footage somewhere that I could edit down into a video. So anyhow, this is the Mustay Province. I think it has a very good flavor. Baker Creek describes it as delicious French heirloom, big flat pumpkin to 20 pounds, shaped like a large wheel of cheese. Next up, we have the China Jade. I think this is the one I actually mentioned I was growing during the whole seed catalog video. And this is a cucumber. And I think it's gonna be a very good cucumber. Apparently it will grow without pollination or you can let it pollinate either way. I will read the description. A stunning jade colored flesh and unmatched sweet flavor make this a superb snacking cucumber. A cute, popular cucumber from Northern China. It grows well in the garden and the greenhouse. Long, slender, thin-skinned fruit will develop without pollination, making a seedless and burpless cuke. So the non-pollinated the non version of the cucumber is burpless and obviously seedless. So you have to, no doubt, do the pollination if you're wanting to save seeds from it. But it is... A fun variety I'm looking forward to trying. The next is kind of a, a basic thing. It's a zucchini. This is the gray zucchini. I have had it in my waiting list for Baker Creek for a while. I forget what motivated me when I first put it in there, but I decided to pull the trigger and actually get it this year. And let's see, oh, we don't have a description on that side. Do we have one on this side? We don't have a description here either. So I refer you to the website, which surely does have a description for it, the gray zucchini. Maybe I'll edit in a little bit of, of talking here that will describe the gray zucchini, and maybe I'll put a, a picture up for it as well. Next up, we have the Gelber Englisher Custard, which is undoubtedly a squash. Yeah, it says a squash at the top. So this is a unique variety from Getzlerspin, Germany. Clear lemon yellow patty pans with a bizarre twist. Fruit is oddly flattened, flavorful, and prolific. And I 
I don't recall at this time what the marketing was, but I think Baker Creek had some Facebook post that <laughs> that hooked me. I don't know what it was, but it, it, it sounded like something I, I needed to try. So <laughs> it might be that it was like pest resistant or something like that. But, you know, at, a, at the end of the day, a squash is a squash. I had a video on the Desi squash, which is a unique variety that I tried from Baker Creek a couple years ago that I thought was outstanding. So I would still recommend the Desi squash if you're looking at things to, to get. But this I will try to the, the Gelber or Gelber Englisher custard squash. I have for a while now wanted to grow tomatillos in my garden. I actually thought of just saving seeds from tomatillos from the store. Uh, I did not obviously do that. I, I instead got these and we will see how they are. This is a Rio Grande Verde tomatillo. It's described as prolific, special selections yield large apple green fruits, globe shaped and very large, three to four ounces. So it is probably pretty recently in my adult life, you know, maybe maybe a decade or so ago, but that I learned really that tomatillos even existed and that if you ever have a green salsa, it is generally a tomatillo-based salsa as opposed to a tomato-based salsa. So I look forward to growing this. It grows similar to tomatoes, but it, as it, you notice it has little husks on it similar to a ground cherry if you've ever grown a ground cherry. And if you aren't familiar with tomatillos, stay tuned this year. Hopefully we'll get a good crop of them and be able to show them off. Next up we have a free seed Russian kale. Uh, I've, I've grown red Russian kale before. I actually love red Russian kale. I think it's a great, I've used it in salads and everything before. So I'm glad to have it. I think I've already gotten free kale from them before and I, I, I actually purchased kale, uh, the red Russian kale years ago. So, but it's good, I'm glad to have it. And if you've gotten these free seeds as well, please grow them. Uh, kale, as you know, is slightly more cold hardy than some things. So you can extend your season with kale and it'll actually generally grow over the winter even. Uh, so you can start your, your crop the next year going. Let's go ahead and read the description. 50 days, a favorite all-purpose kale, part of the description is covered up by the label, with eye-catching color and form, Russian red is very tender and mild at any size, but especially well suited to baby greens. The oak-type leaves of this pre-1885 heirloom variety have a red tint. All right, next up, oh, soybeans. <laughs> So, in some ways, going out and buying heirloom seeds, soybeans, when soybeans are like mass produced by farmers everywhere, is, is a bit silly. But these are, you know, supposedly pretty good for edamame. And I just thought it'd be fun to grow my own soybeans and see how that goes. Generally speaking, I would say I am not a good green bean grower. And I know these are a little bit different. You don't need the pods, but, well, you don't. Yeah. So, anyhow, I. I'm still going to grow them and I think it's going to be fun and maybe we'll have some good soybeans to snack on as well. Let's see what it says. 80 days, superior flavor and vigorous growth habit, highly regarded in Japan for its sweet flavor, perfect for edamame, soy milk, tofu, and more. Homesteaders or home gardeners, beginner soybean with amazing flavor. Dried seed is black in color. So I'm glad that they say that it is a good beginner soybean, whatever that would mean, but I am a beginner soybean grower. So you can grow along with me this year on the channel as I tackle soybeans and hopefully break my curse of not doing well with beans. I think my problem with beans is I, I frequently do not water them as much as I need to. The other problem I often have with beans is pests. I particularly get, uh, I think, they think they're called cucumber beetles. They're kind of a yellow, almost ladybug-like looking thing that will attack your cucumbers, but also beans. <laughs> Here's another where their marketing just got me. It's a really big carrot. 
you know, whatever. <laughs> I like carrots, but I'm gonna see if I can grow a really big one. I'm gonna set up its own bed for this, so stay tuned. I will do a video of setting up its own bed. Probably be very sand-based in what I put inside the bed to help them grow that extra length. And, you know, it, <laughs> it's silly, but I'm, I'm excited to try growing these really large carrots. And, uh, you know, I think that it'll be fun. A super long carrot from Japan. This variety is sweet, especially when harvested after fall, after the fall frost. Also an incredible snacking carrot, ideal for fresh eating. Roots easily reach over two feet in length when grown in the right soil. A fantastic choice for market or giant vegetable growers. Sure to be a hit at your county fair. Well, I don't know that I'll enter them in a county fair, although eh, maybe it'd be fun to do. But I would, <laughs> I will have fun growing them, and I will certainly show them on the channel. Hopefully, we have a good crop of those this year. Next up, the Chinese string eggplant. Now, I've I've had various eggplants that are similar to this, kind of the longer purple eggplants that are either Chinese or Japanese or something like that. And I've generally enjoyed them. I think they, they grow a little bit easier than the bigger eggplants. And so I, uh, I'm excited to try it. Let's see what it says about it. Buttery, tender East China variety, our favorite for raw eating. For raw eating, wow, raw eating the eggplant. No bitter flavor and super tender. Most gourmet eggplant we have tried. Very high yielding. Plants produce provisions of 10 to 12 inch long fruit with lavender skin and snowy white flesh. Great for the grill. So I think this is going to be a lot of fun. It sounds delicious. I think Baker Creek probably posted something about that, this and that is why I ended up getting it. And it'll be fun. I, I really look forward to growing this and seeing if it is a, a good tender flavor. Next up, the heavy hitter okra. Just look at that picture on there. That is a plant just loaded down with okra. Now I like okra and I have grown it before and I'm looking forward to seeing if this is as productive. Now I am just probably at about the northern part of where you really can grow okra. I am in zone 6A. So our growing season is just long enough to get some good okra, but We'll see how this does here. Most productive okra we have ever seen. The unbelievable heirloom was selected and perfected over decades by Ron Cook, a farmer in Oklahoma. No compromise to flavor and texture, heavy crops of uniform pods, perfect for picking and savoring all season long. So if that description is accurate, there would be no reason anyone would ever grow anything but this type of okra. So <laughs> I'm sure it's not quite 100% accurate, but I'm sure they taste good and may be prolific, so we will give it a try and let you know the verdict this year. Next up, <laughs> same free seed we already talked about. Looks like I got it twice. That's the problem with multi-ordering when you are in the same basic time period. Next up, what do we have here? This is the Sweetheart Cherry Tomato. This is just like a cute little red cherry tomato that was well described as well. I once again may substitute in a description of this to help kind of let people know what it was, but this was prominently featured in the Whole Seed Catalog and it was prominently featured on some post, I think, on Facebook as well. In either case, I ultimately decided to get the Sweetheart Cherry. Now I will say just filling this packet it feels like there aren't a whole lot of seeds. How many does it say? Oh, they're saying they're giving me a minimum of 10 seeds. So this might be right at that 10 seed mark because it does not feel very full at all. But Sweetheart Cherry Tomato, I'm sure even just one plant will give tons and tons of cherry tomatoes. So hopefully we'll get a good plant growing on that. Ah, here's at least something different than the kale. Butter Crunch Lettuce. Now this is a lettuce variety that I believe I've grown before, and I like lettuce. I do frequently grow my lettuce inside hydroponically as, I don't know, the work of going out, picking your lettuce, washing it, making sure it doesn't have any bugs in it, getting it dried. Like, eh, I don't really enjoy it so much. Like I, It feels like you could always end up with 
little bugs and stuff and you know even if you do a good job of washing and so and, and you know when you go inside you don't have things that have eaten on it as much and you don't have to worry about the pesticides to keep stuff off if that's that's the other way you could do it and so I just I grow hydroponically for a lot of my lettuce now I do think when you grow lettuce hydroponically sometimes you get a little bit more of a watery flavor but you know I'm I'm happy with my lettuce grown inside probably in an arrow garden which you may remember I did a video about maybe a year or two ago this says it was developed by George Raleigh Cornell University and an all-american selection for 1963 classic butterhead type was the standard for many years very heat tolerant slow to bolt next up we have Tappy's heritage tomato <laughs> so here's something funny i don't remember ordering this i wonder i've been saving these seeds to do this video for a while now like i think seeds i ordered like maybe even four or five months ago might be in here so i hmm, don't remember about tappies at all or what inspired me to maybe when we flip it over and look at the description i'll remember a little more most likely there was another good marketing effort by Baker Creek that got me to do it, but I just don't recall. So let's read about it. Developed by longtime seed growers, Marilyn and Mary Ann Needens, good disease resistance, great yields, perfect globular shape, wonderful flavor, superb for home or market growers. So yeah, I don't, um, I don't recall anymore the inspiration, but it sounds good. So we'll try it. And we'll try some Tappy's Heritage Tomato. See how good it is. <laughs> Next up, now this is just a very generic eggplant, uh, real black eggplant. I just wanted to get kind of a generic black eggplant. The fruit and even cowlings of this variety are a stunning shade of obsidian, making it one of the prettiest eggplants around. Aside from an eye appeal, this tasty variety is top notch for eggplant parmesan breaded cutlets, katsu style, grilled, or stir fried. So yeah, it's basically just eggplant. I think this is gonna be a little bit more striking in that deep black style, deep purple, I guess, technically. But it is an eggplant. What do we have here? This is a pumpkin, I think. It says Long Island Cheese winter squash and we don't have a description on this packet either so I will see if I can put in a description for the Long Island cheese and then this one boy I forgot I got these I need to get these planted because these are onion seeds and onion seeds should already be planted if I'm gonna to want to have a season right now so I better get these done Maybe today, so <laughs> maybe our next video is going to be on uh, planting the onions because, boy, I, f I totally forgot I had ordered these. And so, anyhow, the Ailes of Craig, there's no description here, but I know it's a giant onion. Like, it's a really big onion. And I've tried growing it before, and I've been completely unsuccessful. In fact, I am very bad at growing onions altogether. So I don't really know why I bought this again. I'm probably gonna be a horrible failure again, but if you've successfully grown the Elsa Craig, particularly if you have done so from what would kind of be an intermediate, neither long day nor short day, we're right in 6A, right in the middle of the country. So I don't know what I necessarily need to do. I think the main thing is getting them planted at this point because, because again, we're into mid to late February, February and they need to be planted so that we can put them out in, well, ideally, ideally you would have them, I think, basically for eight weeks prior to your frost, you'd have them growing inside. So that should be now they're already growing. And so I'll get them in as soon as I can. All right, well, thank you for joining me for this video. Let me know below if you are growing any of the same varieties that I have uh, discussed here. Here, let me put these back in there. Any of the same varieties that I have grown here, or if there are any new varieties that you are getting that you're excited about, or if you, know, you have any reaction to anything that was in this video. And 
If you do like this video, please do give it a thumbs up and check out our seat giveaway. Make sure you're a subscriber to this channel and we hope to see you next time.